Hello friends, welcome to my next tutorial on data wrangling tutorial series. The ultimate guide to data wrangling with Python using Rust Polish data frame to work with finance and supply chain data analytics. These are the topics we are going to cover in this series. In my very first video, I covered how to create finance and supply chain data using Polar series and Polar's data frame data structure. In second video, we learned about Polar's context and how to apply Polar context to view data. In today's blog, we are going to discuss basics of using Polar expression and in follow-up videos, we are going to take a deep dive into Polar expression for data transformation. So let's get started. I want to call out that you'll find link to source code in video description below. And you can reach out to me at GitHub, Twitter, and YouTube. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to this channel for more videos. Let's open our Jupyter notebook from last session. And if you recall, we did create an entire supply chain data model using Polar's data frame. We created product, product category, customer, sales order, and invoice data frame, etc. Now let's jump, jump right into the ordered data frame and see a sample. So in a new cell, let's use the selection polar's context here to pick up some, to see some values. So for example, order.sample and let's split five different rows. And I'm going to include the with row count function here so that I can display the row number in front of the data frame. All right, so as you can see, there's a row number. And if you recall, in a typical sales order, we have ID, that means unique ID as of date, customer and the item purchased by that particular, particular customer, quantity and posted total. All right, so now uh, let's take this example and see what if you want to use some kind of a, you know, uh, are you, if you're interested to see only certain fields. So in that case, what do you want to do? You want to apply the select context on your order data frame. So order.select and inside that order.selects, let's pick the column, so pl.column. And here one option is you can you can pass the name of that particular column. So for example, I want to pick ID column, as of date column. So one option is you can manually type each and every field. Now, why do you want to do that? So you want to do that in certain cases. So for example, in poster total, as you can see, this is like, you know, this is in million uh, dollar transactions. So obviously if you want to print it in some, uh, say in thousand, so if you want to do some transformation. So here simply what you can do, divide by thousand and you can give it a different name. So you want to put dot alias and give it a different name to this particular column. So this is one way of doing it. Why I'm doing it? So the, so it's going to retain the original order plus is going to rename that particular one uh, one field that posted total and is going to rename it to something else. All right. So if you run this, as you can see, let's scroll down. Let's run this and scroll down a little bit to see how the posted total amount field is changed into amount that the n thousand. But you know, uh, there are smarter way of doing the same thing. What if you don't have to print the all the you know all the rest of the columns because rest of the columns are not changed yet. Let's try to rewrite this code and see if you can achieve the similar results with the less amount of code. All right. So let's open another cell here and uh, let's take baby steps one at a time. So what if you want to see all the columns here? So simply what you want to do, you obviously you don't want to type the entire list of all the columns. What you can do simply is star, just like you do in SQL, select a star. All you do, order, that means data frame, dot select and pl dot call is star. See, and you can print in the era everything else. There's a similar syntax. Instead of using pl.call start, you can also use something called pl.all. So if you run this, it's going to show you the same thing. That means it will display all the columns as is. All right. So now let's go. What if you want to print all the columns, but you are not interested to see only one of two particular columns? Same thing. What do you do? df order.select call star, and then you can cascade the methods on the um, uh, on the previous series. So dot exclude and here you pass the list of the um, columns which you do not want to see. So obviously what it says is give me show all the columns except excluding these two columns say customer and quantity. Let's rewrite the same code in another way. So for example if you want to display only three columns. So in that case like you know it's, it's very simple. Then you just say select and then you previously have you seen in the previous example pl dot call and display the all the columns you want to see. So row number, ID and quantity. Okay, that's a very quick way of, you know, uh, of displaying the columns you are interested in. All right, so now let's uh, take one more step here. And what if, so for example, you are working with some date columns and obviously in data frame, you want to display the date on the extreme left hand side. That means you want to display this table starting with as of date. In that case, just put the as of date um, at the very beginning. And then as you can see, you can convert that. So we'll, we're going to cover the data type conversion in a later video today. But for now, just call the DT function here and you can convert that date to a string. So DT dot to a string, and then you can just, you know, uh, for, uh, pass the format. All right, as you can see, the date is converted to the string here. 
right let's take one more example here so what if you want to you know if you you can also apply the regex so that means just um, apply the regex pattern here suppose you want to display the column based on certain regex so i only want to see the column which has a starting with id or starting with say quantity so qt and you know say amount you can pass like you know you can be creative and if you know regex very well you can pass the regex string here and you, you see this so polar data frame select context it understand how regex works and it's going to display the column based on the regex pattern you uh, you pass into the select context here all right let's take one more example here what if you want to just display the column based on the data type later on when you are working on machine learning obviously you want to do that uh, the reason is you only want to see some numericals or string you know those kind of a thing as you can see in this example i have like you know unassigned integer 32 integer 64 and date time so sub what if you want to see pick the values based on only certain data types so for example so same thing pl dot call and here you can pass the uh, data type so for example unins, uh, unassigned integer 32 i want to see all the values which have the data type which is integer 32 or integer 64 now as simple as that if you run this see it's going to display only those columns which are of these two data types and you can pass as many data types you want all right let's take one more example here so what if you want to pull some unique number of column values so obviously you want to see how many unique customers are already out there so you know if you do that typically group by method you know uh, there is other other method as well but what polar data frame select context provides you this is a unique method and let me display this to you so let's uh, first just take the sample here so on that sample because i don't want to change the original uh, data frame here one thing you can do the traditional way of doing it you can group it by um, customer and you can run the aggregation on that one and display the count so that way it will display you how many rows of belong to that one customer customer there's another faster way of doing it uh, it provides you a one one function so you just call like and underscore unique so select the column and then you can pass that function and underscore unit what this function is going to do is just going to display you how many unique different customers are already out there so this is a very handy function um I use this function a lot. A lot of times I want to know how many different unique customers are in my entire sales register here. And imagine if you have millions and millions of transactions and you want to quickly see how many different quantities are there or customers are there. So this this function definitely is, is very, very handy function. And here is giving error because I didn't select the quantity um, in the original data frame here. Let's rerun this. All right. So again, as I shown you, an underscore unique is a quick function to show you the display, the uh, different, the unique number of rows uh, on the data frame. All right, let's dig in a little bit more deep. What if you want to have some condition inside your expression? So for example, you are picking up the customer and you want to see if the customer is this, then display this. If customer is equal to this, so for example, you have it, you know, you can do a lookup. If your customer is 100, then is a preferred customer. If your customer is not equal to 100, this is non-preferred customer. So you can apply very simple syntax here, pl dot when, and you pass that condition here. And if this, so it's like if an else statement, then do this. So again, once you run this, it will be very, you know, it is this method comes in very, very handy. And you can, you know, it does a later part of the video when you'll be doing the data transformation. This is definitely, you know, something I use it a lot. So far, we have seen how to use Polar Contacts with Polar Scholar method. Now I'm going to show you something very unique. Polar delivered a package called Selectors. It's like a kind of a sub package and it's often referred as CS. So if you use this package, it makes your life very, very easy. So for example, let's first just import it and you will see how, it, uh, how to work with this package. So import Polar.Selectors as CS. And here, what you can do, you can directly refer to the CS when you want to work with the columns. So for example, same example I'm going to take, dfauto.select, I'm going selecting all the fields here. As you can see, it's going to display every all the fields here. So for example, if you want to select only certain integer, or you know, the, the, like last time you were mentioning about the uh, data types, and here similarly, what you can do, dfauto.select and cs.integer, cs.string. So CS package delivers a lot of inbuilt methods which you can directly call in on your data types, on your, on your data frame. All right, so if you see that, a similar results you will achieve. The only, you know, the beauty of this directly working with the selectors package is it is very intuitive and you can directly call those methods within your select uh, context here. Similarly, for example, you want to see everything which is numeric, but you don't want to see the first field. So you can say ch.numeric minus, you can use the plus and minus and those kind of a thing. See, so for example, it shows you everything, all the numeric fields, 
um, and you know instead of you don't know like you know you don't want to know like integer type and everything you don't want to type the whole thing you just type the CS dot numeric same thing if you want to if working with the regex or by name so it delivers a lot of different, different functionalities for example give me everything which is start by the name customer or it is numeric so you can mix and match you can use a logical operator you can directly con you know name your um, fields there so definitely the cs package is worthwhile and if you work with your uh, data a lot often you want to see your data like you know how it looks like you can directly use this package the cs package let's take a look at few more examples here so for example uh, so df auto dot select and actually it's right now it's saying everything which is not numeric so you can you know uh, you put the tilde character in front of that so only field which is not numeric is as update okay now let's say give me every field all the columns which contains uh, say something id or which matches with underscore things so for example id and um, say as of date okay so if you run this so you, you know it's showing you uh, those two fields here similarly you can say you can do the conversion at well so for example say you know take the temporal and you know read the signature of this particular method so you, you know uh, you can review some examples here so take the temporal columns you can change it to the expression to date and you can display in the string format that's all I wanted to cover in this video today. So we saw how to use basic expressions to select our columns inside the data frame. In follow-up videos, we are going to cover some expressions in more details and we are going to dive into more complex topics. Stay tuned. Thank you.